The topic for today is LSTM and GRU. We have already seen the basic RNN model. Today we are going to see a little advanced architecture on RNN which is LSTM and GRU. So let's dive into each of them. So you already know that CNN was the real beginning of deep neural networks, right? So it was not easy for shallow neural network to extract high level features from data and general expression variability was not good. And again, CNN could not be extended for sequential data. And all of that introduction we have covered in the basic model of a CNRNN. Now today we are going to talk about how the advanced architecture of RNN like LSTM and GRU got evolved. So they are the more evolved versions of vanilla RNN. And what was the limitation of RNN? During backpropagation, RNN undergoes vanishing gradient problem. Now what exactly is this vanishing gradient problem? Gradient, you already know that the gradient update rule is mu weight is equal to uh, the weight minus eta into gradient, that is learning rate into gradient. So what happens now is during backpropagation, if the gradient is too small, then learning rate into gradient will be a very small value. So there will nothing be, um, there will be no approximate weight changes that are going to happen to be implemented or updated as a new weight. So with that, uh, the gradient becomes so sh starts shrinking and it becomes extremely small that does not contribute towards learning. There is no updation of new weight. That is vanishing gradient. So generally in RNN, the earlier layer of the network le don't learn much because of vanishing gradient problem. So I'll explain you what it is. So what is happening here is in an RNN you have multiple layers, right? So you just do a feed forward and then you come back for backpropagation for learning. So what happens is here there will be a proper gradient, so there will be learning. Here will be a proper gradient, so there will be learning. But as soon as you move backward, gradient starts diminishing to, to an extent that you there are no new weights that are updated. So minus eta and gradient. This gradient is so small that new weight is equal to old weight and there is no learning. So as soon as you move towards the earlier layer, then what happens is you will be having a vanishing gradient problem which will lend which will le lead the RNN to forget so they have short term memory in long sequences whenever the data is too high wherein you have lot of layers coming in an RNN then the earlier layer will not be able to retain the data so they cannot hold long term sequences much inside their memory so this is the biggest disadvantage of RNN so now, the first example that I am showing here is, for example, a short sequence is there, the sky is dash, so the RNN is going to predict the sky is blue, that's cool. But if there's a long sequence, for example, Krishna lived in India for 12 years and he loves to love watching movies, he's a fan of dramas, he's fluent in dash. So RNN could not answer it because to answer it, RNN has to remember the earlier layer has to remember Krishna lived in India so that they can write he's fluent in Hindi. So what was the reason of failure of that RNN model was long term sequences and there is inherent relationship between each and every sentence. So what is this solution to the short term memory of the RNN? It was LSTM and GRU. So they have got this gate mechanism which will help them to regulate the flow of information. Also it helps them to recognize which data is important so that it can keep in the memory and it will discard any relevant information. So it uses only the memory um, enabled data that is the relevant information to make, it, to, make, to make certain predictions. Now what are the applications? You would see immense applications of LSTM under speech recognition, speech synthesis, generation of text and auto caption generation for your videos. Uh, for an example, suppose you want to um, buy something online, so you, what do you do? You will probably read some reviews but do not have that much patience to read an entire review. Subconsciously, you will only go for certain key points like amazing, wonderful, fool, bad, definitely buy again, etc, etc. So with that keyword, you will understand that uh, whether you are going to buy that product or not. So the same principle holds on to LSTM and GRU. You will not concentrate much on words like they should, the, like, etc. So when recalled, you would remember all the keywords and that's what LSTM and RGRU are going to do. They are only going to keep some relevant information which will help them to predict the model. Now, 
talking about LSTM, LSTM is an artificial neural network which is an advanced recurrent artificial neural network architecture which is pro proposed in the year 1997 and it was unlike the for feed forward network, you know normal RNN um, that has evolved, uh, a feed forward network with a feedback is nothing but an RNN. Of course, LSTM is an extension of a simple RNN, therefore it has got feedback connections. But it can not only process single point data, but it will it will be able to process the entire sequence of data like speech or video. Basic applications of LSTM you can find out in unsegmented, connected handwriting access recognition, speech recognitions, auto caption generation, etc. LSTM is again, which I tell is a modified version of RNN which will help you to retain the information. It's easier to remember the past data in the memory. So if I'm going to see a simple process wherein I compare RNN and LSTM, the prefer, this is the archite RNN architecture basically. And how does it work? First of all, suppose I'm writing this sentence, this box of cereal gave me a perfectly balanced breakfast. I want to, you know, identify or get the sentiment of this sentence. So first what I would do in an RNN is, as I explained you, it will go into an embedding layer wherein it will be converted into a vector representation. And what will happen is these the sequence of these words will be then processed one by one wherein you have got a hidden state uh, which is going to process to the next state which I already discussed in the mechanism of RNN. So now let's see how this hidden state is calculated for that you must know what is the previous state, what is the current input. So I write previous state as h of t minus 1, you want the current input as x of t and the new hidden state as ht and then some mathematical model useful as an activation function here we are using a tan h. Now why exactly are we using tan h because it's a squishing function it helps you to regulate the value of a neural network from minus 1 to 1. Now the information vector which we have just now calculated under the various mathematical transformations and then they will be regulated under the value of minus 1 to 1 by using a tan h function. Thus the symbol of activation tan h function comes into the picture and a little bit modification in the architecture. Now let's see how does an RNN work. So RNN has got a similar control flow as that of uh, Sorry, LSTM has got a similar control flow as that of an RNN, but then there are the major differences in LSTM which lies in its operation which is present inside the LSTM cell. The cell has got a completely different uh, operation than an RNN cell. So what makes this LSTM cell special? Apart from the activation functions here, what you could see it, it has used a lot of gates and cell states. It will be knowing which information to retain, which information to to discard, and thus it can achieve long-term dependency. Sample RNA, LSTM cell is shown, shown here, where it is using gates and cell states. Now you can see here, uh, there is a cell state. There are three gates here, input gate, forget gate, and output gate, along with suitable activation function. We're going to decode all of them. So what exactly is a cell state first? So cell state is nothing but an sequence highway. It will help you to form a memory to this particular network wherein it will help you to transfer information from previous time steps. So it will reduce the effect of short term memory and the information can be added to it or removed from it. I mean important keywords can be added or removed through the help of these gates that are present. So you've got a forget gate and an input gate and an output gate for that. And gates are nothing but a kind of neural networks again which will decide which information to retain or discard. They are trained which information to retain or discard. Now an LSTM cell, if I talk in detail, the hidden state in LSTM is broken into two parts which I just discussed as a cell state which is nothing but an internal memory wherein entire information is stored and the other is a hidden state which we actually use to compute our output. So they are shared across every time step inside an LSTM cell. Also LSTM cell uses these gates uh, which has got a separate activation function other than TANH which is a sigmoid activation function. Important part is gates use sigmoid activation function because you know sigmoid ranges from 0 to 1. So it will help you to update the data or forget the data. Thus a network will learn how which data it has got to remember and which data it has to forget. So there are three different gates present inside an LSTM cell where I'm here I have uh, decoded the entire cell also onto the right hand side of a picture. 
the first gate that I'm going to discuss is about forget gate. So forget gate again has using a sigmoid function which skishes its output value from 0 to 1, wherein closer to 0 means you are going to forget that keyword and 0 to closer to 1 means you're going to retain that information. For an example, if I have a sequence like Mark is a good singer, he lives in California, Jacob is also a good singer. So here you are seeing that Mark is replaced with Jacob, whatever for coming upcoming sentences are there, I'll be talking on Jacob. So Mark will be forget it. So mathematically, if I want to write a forget gate output, then I would say that it is a function of this input at that time and its corresponding weight matrix, its previous state its weight uh, corresponding to the weight matrix and it has also got its bias parameters apart from the sigmoid function so that's a mathematical representation now talking on the second type of gate which is present inside an lstm is an input gate where you can see that again you have got a sigmoid function pushing the value between 0 and 1 meaning 0 stands for it's an in, uh, not important uh, data and one means it is an important data and we also pass the hidden state and current input there to a tanh function so that we can regulate the network so we multiply tanh activation output with sigmoid output to decide which information from tanh output must be retained or discarded after this we will have enough information to calculate the self state so you can see here you have an input gate coming and a forget gate coming both of these output will be added together and you form a memory to this particular cell which is your cell state and then um, we are going to talk on the mathematical uh, uh, model of this input gate output so you can see here again input at that time weights corresponding to that input gate previous state weights corresponding to it and the bias overall linear relationship and then an activation function sigmoid function here now talking on the last gate which is your output gate you can see it is going to decide what the next state should be it is going to decide which information should be taken from this cell to give us an output so the hidden state contain information belonging to previous input and it is also used for prediction so for this you what you have to do is you have to pass on your hidden state and also the current input to a sigmoid function which is shown here and then a newly modified cell state which will be useful um, for us to carry forward our information through a tanh function again here tanh output and sigmoid output they are multiplied to decide which information will be carried by the hidden state new hidden state and then a new cell state are then forwarded to the next time cell so this is how an lstm cell works so for an example i can give jacob made a debut album which was super congratulations what i'm going to predict here is jacob so output gate again mathematical model if i want to see the input at that time weights corresponding to the output gate previous step uh, time step uh, state and weight corresponding to the output i'm sorry should be output gate and then you have got its bias now there's one more thing that is called as a candidate state which is to update the cell state that means uh, you want to add a new information by removing the previous in, uh, state information from it then you are going to go for a candidate state so final information if i want to put final equation or the final information equation would be previous information with forget gate input multiplied with you know previous information into forget gate output plus input gate output and candidate state so both of these you can see the output of forget gate is going to decide which information to keep or discard the output of input gate again is going to decide which information is going to be appended so this g of t gt is your candidate state wherein i just discussed what exactly is a candidate state here and that's what is your output gate equation so when output time step is zero information is not passed to the output and vice versa so this is a sample lstm code which i guess is self-explanatory over here you need not do this everything again creating candidate layer and all because in tensorflow uh, keras if you directly use an lstm entire combinations of interconnections are made okay uh, in this 
uh, we are going to see this little example here so here you can see uh, the faded text is all forgotten and the the bold text is what is retained so that it understand that it is a positive uh, review and you can buy the product now talking on GRU it's a new generation of RNN which is similar to LSTM in functionality it it solves vanishing gradient problem same like LSTM it was invented in 2014 but the only thing is it is simpler in model when compared to LSTM LSTM was quite complex it is going to use only hidden state in place of cell state to transfer the information thus it has got only two gates reset gate and update gate so you can see here update gate and reset gate are similar to the forget gate in input gate of the LSTM which we just discussed it is going to discard, discard or retain the information it's going to take the decision and reset gate will go also decide which information to forget so if this is the basic cell diagram I can give you an elaborated diagram also so this is the elaborated diagram of a particular GRU cell you can see there are update gate reset gate hidden state input given and then you have got an output and then a new hidden state so you can see update gate equation output um, is this this is your so called uh, what you can say uh, the internal interconnection of the update gate and it incorporates obviously the input the previous states and the weight parameter and of course a mathematical function which is sigmoid the entire equation can be also drawn as a diagram which I have just shown here similarly you have got a reset gate which uses input current input previous state output weight parameter and then a sigmoid function the, out, the block diagram is as here using this particular equation you combine both of them and you will use a reset gate output to move ahead to create a memory component so this is your memory component structure mathematical structure so you will also calculate a vector that will that is going to hold the current information that is your current state HD that's your mathematical equation for current state and this is how you could draw it okay now what are the key differences if I want to say that GRU has got only two states two gates and LSTM has got three so GRU is less complicated GRU do not possess any internal memory they don't have output gate that is present inside in an LSTM LSTM inside that you have got input gate and a target gate they are coupled by an update gate and in GRU reset gate is applied directly to the previous hidden state so in LSTM the responsibility of a reset, reset gate is taken care by two gates over there which is input gate and target gate so if I want to talk on GRU advantages obviously because it is simpler it has got fewer tensor operations and they are faster to train so if I want to know which one is best to use then try both based on a use case and then you decide so I have also attached the use case in the text document that I have given to you and uh, you can go for that it is self-explanatory you could see using that use case which uh, uh, model was better GRU and or LSTM